welcome to my Little Detailing Yoda channel, where the first thing I do is check your recording. And yes, you are. That is the uh, terror of a man who has the failed. Um, so yeah, hi, welcome to Detailing Yoga, uh, my little channel where I just try and help you with detailing. Basically, um, I am a professional detailer, have been for 11 years, I'm a Rupes trainer, um, and full-time, everyday, day in and day out, most of the time I am detailing and PPFing cars. Um, what I also try and do when I can is grab the camera for you and give you some hints and tips on stuff that you might find useful, whether you're a hobby detailer or a pro or someone new to the industry or whatever. So uh, today I want to talk to you with this beautiful thing we have in the background, um, which is a quite a rare thing, if you know, a 206 Dino GT. So worth about half a million pounds, one of 130. Um, so yeah, it's quite a thing to detail. Um, so, just quickly, I'm in a bit of a rush because I need to finish the car off before the customer comes, but just quickly, I wanted to talk to you briefly about classic car detailing, historic car detailing, rare car detailing, because in a way, I don't want you to be scared about these cars. Um, there is, a, to a certain degree, it's all paint, it's all leather, all that sort of stuff, but on the other hand, especially when you get to stuff like this, Especially when you get to cars more of this era. Um, this is a 60s car. The 70s and 80s cars also have their challenges, mainly in materials. So I would encourage you to understand a bit more about materials. The leather in these is slightly different to the leather you will get in cars today. It's uh, not a painted leather like, like most modern cars are these days. It's much more... Uh, like, uh, it's got much more in common with a handbag leather. Um, if you want to understand more about that, you know, I could, could go on forever, but, uh, you know, take a day course with uh, Ram at Colour Lock or, or any of the leather companies. They do some great, really educational courses. Some of them are free sometimes. So, leather is a crazy topic. The main thing about cars like this, though, is often a lot of the value of them is wrapped up in their paint and the patina. And where with a more modern car with a clear coat finish or something slightly less collectible, we can really go to town and chase out deep marks. On something like this, we've got much more of a responsibility to keep paint depth because a lot of the value and a lot of the originality is in that paint depth. And, you know, we, we, every time we put a polish on the car, we're removing paint. So I always have a chat with the customer when it's a vehicle like this about... You know, where do they want to be on that balance between removing paint and keeping originality and a little bit of patina. It's a funny thing, patina, but can, you know, d develop towards value. So, um, yeah, my job on this really was to put a good gloss on it, which I think we have. Um, put a really nice Swiss wax wax on it. Um, and really a job like this is in the details. So one of the jobs I've got to do in a minute is just get this old wheel weight glue off. It's one where really your eye will help you because it's not necessarily a 100% paint correction job. It's about the whole of the car. So just making sure the leather hasn't had a scrub. I've mentioned Swiss wax actually. Personally, I would pretty much always go to their range of products on a vehicle like this because you know nothing is going to damage any of the surfaces. The leather cleaner will work wonderfully with this type of leather. Um, the waxes will work great with all the types of paint, many of which are not clear coated. Um, all those sorts of things. Magnesium wheels often, which have a little bit of a difference in care. Um, know your difference between chrome or stainless or polished aluminium. All those things require polishing in a very different way, actually. If you use a polish that works on one, on the other one, it'll dull it, actually. So, yeah, let me know if these are things you want to go into a bit more. I'll try and help out. Um, but just wanted to give you a bit of the, you know, a few of the things that should be in your mind maybe when you're polishing either more valuable cars um, or uh, older cars. Some of the, a lot of the stuff is the same. We still do a test patch. We still start out light and work up to heavy. Paint gauges are less useful because often the cars will have had different amounts of paint at different times anyway. Uh, or often they had such variable paint from the factory, you can tell, can't tell so much. Um, so you need to be on your toes, treat every panel individually, take your time, so cars like this can take a lot longer anyway. 
Um, so yeah, drop me a question, I'm always around, or a trial, I can be a bit slower, because I have another channel, which is my main business channel, which I concentrate on, uh, do this stuff to help you guys out. So um, do drop me a question or a comment if there's anything specific I can help with. Um, but other than that, happy detailing, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks guys.